Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drinks. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Nathan Simmons, and you know where it hurts? My dick. <laughs> and uh, I've got beers, beers, beers. I keep them in my fridge. <laughs> Let's get nuts. <laughs> This is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that fucking, I don't know. We're here. We're doing our best. <laughs> lipping across the finish line of the intro, much like this movie is lipping across the finish line. Uh, it's good to have you back, Mally. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's like this podcast got shot in the knee mm-hmm. and is uh, limping everywhere it goes. It's like this podcast is a legacy cast member who was given a lot of money to not care. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Does that make me Michael Keaton? Uh, sure. <laughs> Why not? We're all Michael Keaton. Uh, I mean, I have the same haircut. I just, boy. I, uh, Mally, I know you, you a lot of times pick movies purely out of spite for the show. 100%. This one is an affront. <laughs> you had to watch it, too. <laughs> oh, but Nathan, did I? Oh, uh, fair enough. Yeah, we'll never know. Yeah, okay. We'll never know. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I was really hoping I could just put this on the schedule and then not be here for this episode. <laughs> We made you. We gra- we grabbed you by the ankles uh-huh. and drug you through the speed force to be here. So I did technically rewatch this movie. Okay. Because uh-huh. it's written on your heart. And by technically, I mean the person on the plane next to me a few days ago watched it. Uh-huh. And I asked them to turn the subtitles on. Holy shit. Great. Uh not only that, not only did you pick this for us to do, but you drug along a guest yeah. to be on the show, too, who had to unfortunately bear witness to this shit as well. Oh, so uh, let's go ahead and introduce him, bringing him back. I think last heard on the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom episode, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys have against him? <laughs> And before that, it was, uh, what, Crimes of Grindelwald, I think? Shit. So, yeah, this is... We got to get you on a good one at some point, buddy, but uh, until then... <laughs> no, we don't. Please welcome back returning guest, film connoisseur, Mr. Michael Moss. Hey, everybody. <laughs> okay, in Moss's defense, we tried to get him on a good one, and he forgot. Right? Well, and then I forgot to put him on another one that he was going to be on, too. So this is this is an affront. I am very sorry, Moss, you've done to deal with this. This is his quantum of solace. <laughs> yes. Listeners, you should be aware, the last time I hung out with Moss was the day before we were both supposed to be on this <laughs> podcast and neither one of us was aware of that fact. Mm-hmm. So funny. And it, it, just, it just never came up. Yep. Just painfully oblivious. <laughs> just drinking the pain away. Yeah. Uh, speaking of drinking the pain away, uh, I had to do that to put on this movie. Sure. That is interminable. <sighs> this movie is forever. I feel like I'm still watching oh, it. Oh, someone got a word of the day from the dictionary. <laughs> Melly's clue for this one is so accurate. It is the <sighs> slowest movie about the the fastest dude. Mm-hmm. It is a two and a half hour film where I would argue nothing of substance ever occurs. Nothing. <laughs> I forgot what my clue for this was because I gave it to you like a month ago. <laughs> okay, so just so you guys are aware, mm. there is a, a nice little caveat about this episode and doing it this week as well because oh. we're talking about superheroes and this week on December 15th, mm. it will have been 45 years since the original Superman hit theaters. Right. What are we doing? And uh, who would have thought Christopher Reeves would have been in both of these movies, guys? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Wow. Yeah, we, we trotted out his cell shaded corpse for this film. <laughs> you know, we talk a lot about Daniel Craig's tenure as being like the longest Bond. <laughs> I think Christopher Reeves yeah. now holds the record, right? From like longest <laughs> yeah. role. Yeah. It's him and Tom Baker and Doctor Who. That's about it. <laughs> and eventually, you guys are just going to give me the fucking Reeves treatment on this show, aren't you? Jesus. Yeah, when you're not here, we're going to get AI. I've, I've thought about it. Oh, I thought you meant we were going to like make you ride a horse. That's, that's where my mind went to. <laughs> Listen, my wife. Wife is my constantly wife. <laughs> wanting to go horseback riding, uh-huh. and uh, I always am like, "Nah, man, horses fucking defeated Superman." One hundred percent. What do you think's gonna happen if I go? Yeah. That was shattering as a child mm-hmm. when that news came out. Mm-hmm. I was like, "What do you fucking mean?" Mm-hmm. No, it's um. I, I was going in the direction of I think I might just have an AI soundboard for Mally when he's not here <laughs> and just feed it all of the past episodes of him and just see see what it comes up with mm-hmm. and uh, I can just hit a button and have him give a witty response. <laughs> yeah, it would just be like, oh, like Mally, what do you think? 
Oh, I was so happy when that kid died. Yeah, that's pretty much what it would be, I think. <laughs> My sushi just arrived. <laughs> I thought it would be a KFC famous bowl. That was that's down. right. I was trying to remember what you ordered on air. <laughs> you thought I got sushi delivered? I think you a fancy bitch. That does sound bad, though, delivered sushi. <laughs> I've done that semi-regularly. No, thank you. There's a gas station a block away. I would get my sushi there like a fucking normal person. <laughs> okay, John Mulaney. <laughs> I went to rehab. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. We're four white guys talking about The Flash. Sure. We're going to say nothing new, nothing of substance, but, you know, we'll put our own spin on it mm-hmm. and uh, we'll poke fun at this movie. Well, we'll- boy, I have so many substances. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't admit that on mic. I don't want the feds showing up to your to your residence. But that um, nah, wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. I got a lot of notes. Most of them are just this sucks. Mm-hmm. This looks like shit. I hate this character. What are we doing? It's it's a variation of that for about eight pages. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Thanks uh-huh. for joining us, uh, Moss. Great to have you. Of course. Value your insight, Moss. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, fellas. Well, let's go ahead and get into this shit. Okay. <laughs> Do we have to? <laughs> we can talk about literally anything else for an hour. It's fine. I guess I should ask, did anyone bother seeing this in the theaters? I saw it in IMAX. Oh, my God. <laughs> I Moss. did, too. No! I did, too. Oh. I took my dad to see it for Father's Day. Oh and when the God. credits rolled, <laughs> I was like, what did you think? And he was like, uh, it was all right. What did you think? And I said, that is one of the movies ever made. <laughs> How upset was your father that there were no penises? <laughs> he, uh, there, there's hints of penises. I I think he had the same experience that I had as a kid walking out of the Phantom Menace where like I tried to convince myself that there was like, you know, anything to take away from it. And like I talked to him like a week after that movie and he's like, yeah, that was that was such garbage. I don't know like what happened. Boy, it it feels weird to say, but Mm -hmm. this movie came out this year, 2023. It feels like it came out in like 2004. I don't know. I mean, that's when they started (laughs) pre-production. That's what I was going to (laughs) say. There was a viral Twitter thread talking about about like the long road that this movie took to get made and it's so funny because the second tweet is in 1998 (laughs) they officially announced Ezra Miller starring in this movie when the first season of the CW Flash was airing Jesus this movie came out when the final and ninth season of the CW Flash was airing Jesus Christ that's what I mean it's interminable this movie is still happening no it was Ezra Miller (laughs) (laughs) The director is uh, Andy Muschietti, the film stars. You put some stank on that. <laughs> you want to try that again? Hey, I, I'm doing my work here, fellas. No, I love it. Put some Italian on that. I liked it. This man looked at the director's name and was like, mm, let me rub a little funky on it. <laughs> I got to spice this movie up any way I can. And the Muschietti. Gabagool. Hello, mozzarella. The mom in this movie is not putting any spices in her canned tomatoes for her sauce, so I got to put some spice on the episode as we go along. So. We have Miguel Shannon as General Zod. <laughs> 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 the movie stars Ezra Miller, Sasha Cali, Michael Shannon, Ron Livingston, Maribel Verdu, Kiersey Clemens, Anche Tro. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not, but uh, Michael Keaton, Ian Lowe, Shorsay Monica Jackson, and Rudy Mancuso. Mm-hmm. God damn it. I can't believe I'm going to say this. The budget for this movie, fellas, $200 million. And I think that is just for, I mean, that's not counting all of the years in pre-production. Mm-hmm, the marketing. And the marketing. And the you know, the marketing that had to be done by Sasha Kelly because uh, Ezra Miller was in hiding or awaiting trial. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. With his, uh, he was, he was pulling a Waco. He was yeah. <laughs> like hoarded up. Oof. Oh my God, I'm listening to a book about Waco right now. Oh, oh my serendipitous. Shout out Billy Crudup for just running away. Hell Smartest yeah. person uh, per- involved with this production, honestly. Yeah. The movie only grossed $268 million worldwide. Thank God Nathan and Moss saw this in IMAX. Hell yeah. <laughs> Why did David Zaslav not say, you know what? Instead of shoving Batgirl, this Finnish movie with no problematic people involved, let's put this one out. I don't know because, the, you know, there were all these rumors about Warner Brothers lying about Ezra Miller's whereabouts while they were doing reshoots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You put it all on the line for The Flash. Yeah. For Ezra Miller's The Flash. Right. Like, you've seen the final product. Right. I mean, 
That was another weird thing. Do you remember the weeks leading up to this movie? Just the most random motherfuckers doing essentially sponsored, like they might as well have put hashtag ad in their tweets. Yes. Like Stephen King just being like, I don't t- typically like superhero films, but this is great. I like, know. it's so weird. It's so weird. And poor James Gunn having to hold water for this movie. Uh-huh. Like, I mean, like, it's it's a great, it's one of the best superhero movies I've ever seen. Yeah. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> and you know better, James Gunn. Yeah, you made super. You made super. <laughs> if you just wanted to lose a few hours having a great time, yeah. you should... Watch The Flash? No. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. You should go to the Snyderverse subreddit. No. I can't do it. No, thank you. And just read the comments about James Gunn. Some of the wildest dick writing I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. I don't know that the Snyder pill that these people swallow. I, he seems like a perfectly fine guy. Yeah. And I hate that his name gets drugged through the mud because of his fans, right. quote unquote. I agree. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I, you know, it, it's so weird, though, because they, they do. <laughs> this is going to be. The, Uh-oh. Snyder fans brains work so differently from <laughs> other people's brains. Uh-huh. They really do. Uh-huh. Like they rigged bots so that the flash entering the speed force would be played at the Oscars. <laughs> um, I, I completely forgot about that. Oh my fucking God. I saw a tweet the other day that was the opening scene of this movie with the flash running to help Batman. And the, the caption was all caps. They're like, look at this all one shot. I no know. cuts. I know. And I was like, well, then, yeah, there's no cuts in fucking CGI. My man, you know, I tweeted that and then I deleted. I was like, why do I want to, why do I want to put the chum out in the waters for this shit? It's, Never mind. It's why. I mean, that's so wild. Of all of the dumb things you've tweeted, that's the one where you're like, nah, yeah. this is the line. That this was is the, the line. line. I was like, this is the one. That was the one. I'll leave the typo riddled fucking tweets out there, but I can't, I don't want to attract the sharks in the water for this shit. I, and the movie currently sits at a way too high 63% on Rotten Tomatoes. No, fucking it what? It doesn't. Fellas, I had to refresh the page to make sure I was reading that right. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Flop those numbers around. Maybe we got something to talk about. But uh, oh man, I just realized I can <sighs> record this shit laying down. Hold up. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm recording from an air mattress. Cozy Mally. <laughs> like Keaton did with all of his ADR. <laughs> I'm going to play the trailer here for us. All right, fine. As a refresher. No, no, <laughs> just, no, you're not. Should I put it on fast forward, much like the flash? Like, we'll just speed through it? Yeah, put this shit on three times speed. <laughs> Let's go. Actually, that that might be a good bit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can do it. Let's see. <laughs> okay, I'm going to admit that shot of Keaton's mask is dope. I have a note about that scene. <laughs> I have so many questions about the mom in particular. Yeah. Except that's not the rules of the movie. (laughs) Well, this trailer came out before, like, you know, the four rounds of reshoots. Sure. God, Ben Affleck deserves so much better than these movies. I, man, that scene oh. alone is maybe his best performance as Bruce Wayne. I agree. He's so good as Bruce Wayne. He's such a good Bruce Wayne. It's a shame we'll never see his Batman movie. Huh? I'm collecting a paycheck. <laughs> Wild that he can fly now, but he can't turn his head. <laughs> he flies now. He flies now. <laughs> Somehow Michael Keaton returns. <laughs> Look like they're about to kiss. <laughs> we gotta talk about that Batman suit. Can I can I give a maybe a hot take? Okay, this is a good trailer. It's not, not a bad, bad trailer. It's not a bad trailer at all. It's not bad. I want to see this movie. Yeah, <laughs> I will say I played this trailer for my girlfriend, and her reaction was that looks like nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> She's right, but I'd watch this nonsense. Sure. There's not an ounce of uh, annoying as fuck Ezra Miller in this trailer, mm-hmm. which is maybe that's misleading. You know how they sued the cr- the producers of Yesterday because Anna Darmus was in it. Sure. Can I sue David Zaslav and the rest of Warner Brothers for not putting annoying Ezra Miller in this trailer. Not putting a single clip of, of them doing the uh, surfer fish laugh from Spongebob. You know what? This is a perfect segue because I, I pulled some examples for you, Nathan. This, oh, you, no. you mentioned this off mic and I could not hear it because I you sent that before I had rewatched the movie. <laughs> Ezra Miller is doing a perfect th- th- this is exactly where he got it. It has to be. Listen. <laughs> 
I've done it many times myself. You can't just. <laughs> oh my gosh. An interpret fish. <laughs> it's the same fucking thing. Jesus Christ. Uh, I just. I, what is Ezra Miller doing in this movie? You know, so here's the thing. We, we need to talk about Kevin. <laughs> I. I I remember when Ezra Miller like arrived on the scene in movies like We Need to Talk About Kevin mm-hmm. and Perks of Being a Wallflower and thinking that they were a, yeah they're a, they're a very interesting performer and they made interesting choices and there is a universe where they could have become something really fantastic and I feel well, like from a certain point of view they did <laughs> <laughs> okay Obi Wan I think Ezra Miller maybe actually went back in time and uh, <laughs> sabotage themselves ruined the timeline yeah it's a it's it's a shame it's all also, you know, I mean, we're doing as a society, we were doing the thing that happened to Kanye where it's like, oh, this is someone who needs like a ton of help and is not getting it. Yeah. But it's such a bummer seeing this performance, this version of Barry Allen. Yeah. I remember when this movie was announced. Yeah. <laughs> or like when when Michael Keaton's return was announced. And I I think I talked about this a little bit on the Batman Returns episode, but like as a kid, I worshipped at the altar of Tim Burton's Batman. Same. I mean, rightfully fucking so. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It got it got me into comic books. It is it's one of the reasons I wanted to be an actor. Like Michael Keaton was the first actor whose name I learned as a child. Yeah. And then the greatest sin that this movie commits is it brings Michael Keaton back as Batman and fails to make me give a shit. Dude, <laughs> this movie is so concerned with being every other superhero's movie but the Flash. Yes. <laughs> like, we got to do the Supergirl thing. We got to do the Batman thing. Wonder Woman stops by for a quick, how do you do? Because like, you're ch- they're trying to do a Flash solo movie and a Flashpoint movie yeah. and a Dark Knight Returns all at the same time. Mm. And it's so funny reading interviews with Andy Muschietti and realizing, sorry, Andy Muschietti, they think, <laughs> and realizing that he like never really once considered putting Flash villains in this movie. I know, <laughs> like, like even when we see the multiverse at the end of the movie, it's all it's almost all Superman all the time. Yep. It's yep. so weird. I wrote that down. I was like, why are we not seeing like Linda Carter as Wonder Woman? I know apparently she filmed a cameo for it and they took it out. Yeah. But I'm like, why why are we, why is there no Green Lantern world? Why are we so embarrassed by Green Lantern? Like he's not <laughs> sure. mentioned involved nothing with this shit they also like you we see that one old version of the flash right. which is actually a character from the cw show that was a fake flash yeah mm-hmm. real fucking weird i am so sick of multiverse movies dude i am so tired of time travel and different variations because they're being lazy about it yes if they did it well and it wasn't just two and a half hours of jangling keys in front of a baby yeah like you you could tell interesting stories this is well, granted flashpoint is uh, a bad comic it's <laughs> so, not good i didn't mind the the animated movie i thought that was pretty good you know, that does a better job of telling that story i think yeah yeah I'm just, I, I, I'm so over people trying to explain to me, like, the event horizon, the paper through the whole mm. versions of, here's how time travel works. No, no, th- <laughs> that's stupid. This is how time travel. But so- also, like, Ugh. how the fuck does Michael Keaton's Batman know about the multiverse? Right? This is a guy who, as we've seen, all he knows is is punch clown, kiss cat woman, yeah. eat spaghetti, and lie. Like, yeah. that is like, all this guy knows how to do. Because he's fucking Michael Keaton, that's why. I yeah. guess. Yeah. I don't know, man. Has something to do with Spider-Man, I think. (laughs) But also, I will say... I think his explanation of the multiverse is makes the a lot best of sense. explanation in any of these fucking movies. It makes a lot of sense. No, it's it's well written. It's just also, I can't stop thinking about one, how does he know? And two, why does the rest of the movie act like this is not the case? Well, also, yeah. my problem is those noodles are undercooked. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what he's doing. Why are they white? God, Alfred, I miss you. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, my biggest note of this movie is that Boy, the world's greatest detective should know you always finish your pasta in the sauce. There yeah. you go. And that shit looked disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> that whole spaghetti dish looked disgusting. Mm. Even before. I agree. I mean, I would have eaten it, but that's <laughs> beside the point. Even before, I had to watch it splattered all over Ezra Miller's face. Mm-hmm. Could do without that. That's fucking disgusting. I don't want to watch that. Are you still talking about spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> So, I think it was back in the We Need to Talk About Kevin episode, actually, that we did on here, where I said at that time, 
I think Ezra Miller could play a good Joker, and oh, I have no. to contend with that for the rest of my life that I said those words. Yeah, you did. And then the monkey's paw curled. <laughs> yeah, I have to take that to the grave. We said a lot of questionable things in previous episodes. I should have said Ezra Miller would play a good Joker in a movie, not in real life, but uh, <laughs> that's my mistake for not being clear. <laughs> well, that's what happens. I mean, the man heard the episode and was like, all right, bet. Oh, boy. Okay, anyways, fellas, my first note on here is you can get right the fuck out of here with all these different variations of the WB logo. Mm-hmm. No, thanks. Just get on with your fucking movie. Movie. Yeah. The only saving grace I have with this is it gets us right into the movie. It's like 10 seconds and we're in. I was talking to a buddy of mine about this movie last night, uh-huh. and when he saw it in theaters, he got there late. Uh-huh. So the like the first bit he saw of the movie was like him talking to uh what's her name? Iris. Iris. Mm-hmm. He was like, Oh, this is like a pretty good setup. Like, okay, this isn't bad. Yeah. And then, you know, later on he was like, Oh, this is bad. Oh, that's after the whole hospital thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he like he walked in and was like, Oh, okay, this movie's like halfway decent. Yeah. Not realizing he had missed 30 minutes of the <laughs> worst shit of all time. This opening scene is forever. This shit takes so fucking long. And every dialogue scene is shot with extreme close ups like it's fucking good burger like it is it's like it's shot like a nickelodeon show it's like hype williams came in to direct the close-ups everything is fisheye lens everything is stretched i don't understand i feel like mally was the music producer on this because there's no other film that would have two chicago needle drops dude (laughs) what is with the music the the music in this movie is so not right at all there's never once a needle drop i'm like okay this makes sense i don't even like chicago oh i thought you did okay well i take back my statement you want to go back in time and uh, maybe say something different right there <laughs> yeah i'll say credence instead because hey. uh, i saw your spotify rap oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, you gonna tell me like batman fucking racing down the street as fortunate son just fucking ripped <laughs> okay. go hard? That actually that would actually slap can anyone name <laughs> not you Malik? can anyone else name another credence clearwater song besides fortune and son can anybody do it um, bad moon rising they, okay let me rephrase that. Take those two off the table. Any other? I'm going to keep moving the goalpost, but can you name? Have you ever seen the rain? Yeah. Well, okay. This bit's dead. Thanks, Moss. <laughs> You're welcome. Put it in the grave. See, so DC, um, a lot of us are what we call cultured. I'm not. I'm watching The Flash. <laughs> they also have that great song, I'm Batman. <laughs> that would have been great in this movie. I'm Batman. This disgusting ass sandwich that he orders here. Ugh. I was on board with peanut butter. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. bananas. Okay, raisins. Man, mm-hmm. honey, cheese. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> what, what, what else are we going to put on this fucking thing? Put some fucking prosciutto on there. I don't know. Honestly, I'm still kind of in minus the raisins. Well, okay. Maybe I'm not cultured enough to experience cheese and peanut butter in a sandwich together. It's a French cuisine. Oh, okay. Think? It's a French cuisine. Yes. That's what you meant. Uh-huh. <laughs> Omelette du fromage. I could also do without uh, the person I'm ordering food from questioning me. Like, are you running a marathon or something? Dude, make my fucking sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> make my fucking sandwich. My next note is the suit looks bad and they should feel bad. Okay. <laughs> this is something we could talk about. I don't think the suit looks that bad. Uh, I think it's bad, but it's not that bad. I have the same note about this movie that I had about Fast X where no one looks like they're anywhere, yeah. <laughs> including in the suit. Yeah. Uh, what I was going to say, though, is these superhero movies always have to try and justify why other superheroes aren't joining in to help. Sure. How it? How is Superman laser beaming a lava stream from a volcano helping at all? Yes. I think he's creating a trench for the lava to go into, possibly. That would make sense, but I don't think this little quick cutaway is showing that. It just looks like he's just lasering lava. (laughs) Yes. I don't know. I just, none of the, and then they're like, oh, Diane is too busy. Doing fucking what? She shows up at the end. So she, yeah, that's probably it. She's looking at pictures of Steve. (laughs) Steve. God damn it. Possibly sexually assaulting another man. (laughs) That's true. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Uh, I don't know. God damn, that movie's so bad. It's real. Is that, is that a contender for the show? You think? Possibly. I gotta say. It doesn't matter. I'll put it on the fucking schedule. I know you will. (laughs) I'm squarely in the Wonder Woman 1 is good camp. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I like Wonder Woman 1. For the most part, yeah. except for that final act. Well, I didn't like that that much. Yeah, it gets a little wonky when David Thewlis becomes a muscle man. Yeah, <laughs> I love the fact that he keeps his mustache. Hell you yeah. You can also fuck right off with this fake title card starting up Ugh. and then interrupting it. <laughs> it feels like Andy Machete is not, his sense of humor does not align with mine. <laughs> I can tell you that from watching it chapter two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
He also asked this girl for this candy bar and then doesn't eat it and just leaves it right on the fucking ground. So that was pointless. Right. Rude. Much like the rest of this movie, fucking pointless. The metabolism thing is a is a real problem for the first scene. 30 seconds. Yep. And then is never touched on again. And it's also uh, a few years too late because we've already dealt with speedsters dealing with this with A-Train and the boys. That oh, sure. was like a huge thing. Uh-huh. That's the problem with most of this movie is like they set up things like, you know, I got to constantly eat so I can use my suit. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can't use your suit too much because you'll build up a shock. Right. Oh, you can't move people when you're slowing time because then they'll puke their guts out. Except you can. But you can. You can do all of those things and it's never a problem. Mm. So Also, time is not linear, but also if you kill your younger self, your older self ceases to exist. Mm. Maybe. He says maybe. I'll give him that. Yep. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just... This movie has no idea what it wants to do, sure. so it just does everything. Yeah. And then there's no cohesive tissue between any of it. Yeah. I also think... The running as the Flash looks fucking stupid. I've hated it since Justice League. Like yeah. I hate the weird ice skate pose that he does <laughs> and the and the way that they move. Like I, I don't know what it is. I think it looks good in real time where he kind of just like teleports yeah. almost. Yeah. Like that looks cool. But I think the best we've done with speedster running is in that Eternals movie. Oh, like that was agree. the best looking one to me. Yeah, I agree. Hard as fuck. Yeah. With Macari. Yeah. Yeah. And then the only funny part about this running is when they do the joke later on where he's not actually running fast and he's in <laughs> yeah. real time. Like, I did get a good chuckle out of that. I yes. thought it was a pretty good joke. One of the few jokes that works. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, speaking of jokes that don't work, the balls to have this joke about how the Justice League isn't good at getting mental health care. Mm-hmm. Boy, hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> which is clearly a reference to real life problems. Like, uh-huh. it is... <laughs> So fu- I that was the moment in the theater where I said, oh, no. Like, I think I said, oh, no, out loud. What are we doing? <laughs> Why is the maternity ward of this hospital on the top floor? Comedy. Because <laughs> like, fuck them, kids. <laughs> comedy is probably the right answer. They didn't learn much from the Kansas City bombing. That's why. <laughs> there you go. Mm. <laughs> the Kansas City? Oklahoma City. There you, you go. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Do you think the baby in American Sniper looks worse or the babies in this CGI slow down scene? Because <laughs> the CG in this movie, we got to talk about it. I know this baby looks like son of the mask. <laughs> Dude, for a split second, he put that baby in the microwave and I was like, oh, this movie's about to get good. <laughs> I got so many notes about this microwave se- joke. Yeah. Like, boy. It does ding, yeah. which implies that it got hot in there. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. The first time I saw this movie, I wrote this down. I was like, this whole opening scene, does this shit really exist just so Andy Muschietti can do a baby in a microwave joke? Because yeah. it seems like that's all we did. Mm-hmm. Why not? <sighs> <laughs> and then the the line where Alfred says, there's a baby, and then the Flash says, shower. shower. I said, shut the fuck. I said it out loud at yeah. my TV. I was like, shut <laughs> the fuck up. Mm. How does Alfred know there's babies falling out of this window? Does he have a drone nearby where he can get a view of this? Like- my favorite thing about Alfred as the man in the chair, and this is also in the Burton movies, mm-hmm. is he's always doing calculations, uh-huh. and he's scrambling things, and he's jamming frequencies. <laughs> like, according to my calculations, the building's about to fall. Yeah. And like, what do you fucking mean? Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. algorithm do you have? <laughs> what a waste of Jeremy Irons. I know. Uh, no, this the CG in this movie. I know it's been harped on to death, but uh-huh. it cannot be understated. It looks fucking terrible. And I so know bad. it was a creative choice. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I know they said that about, oh, when he's in the speed force, it makes sense because everything's moving so fast around him. And I'm like, no. No, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. It shouldn't look like reboot. <laughs> and if that's the case, why does it in the not the speed force look like that? Like, right. why does it look fucking terrible all the time? Like, mm. it looks like you took a PS2 and rendered baby through it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what these babies look like. They all look fucking terrible. Looks like Katamari Damasi. (laughs) (laughs) What? I don't know, man. I just, I I wish this movie had any semblance of cohesiveness Mm -hmm. because, like, the calorie intake thing would be a good, like, hook to put on it of, like, he's got to constantly eat, Mm -hmm. which then maybe, again, monkey's paw shit. Maybe I'm asking for too much because I don't want to see Ezra Miller eat because it's fucking disgusting every time he does. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like in the 90s, you know, whenever there was, like, a kid and they had to eat, they always made it the most disgusting fucking thing possible. Like, (laughs) like in Kazam. Mm, Chocolate cake scene in Matilda. Oh, yes. That's a good example, too. Ugh. It's like that. Like, this movie feels too late. Right. Kind of like how Venom felt like it was a movie that would have ruled in 2003. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. this movie would have done so much better in the odds than those. Yeah. It's it's just, it's too late, man. Count your losses. Like, man, just imagine at the end, after his tooth falls out, we just cut to fucking Numb by Linkin Park. Dude, <laughs> oh my god, the tooth falling out. So gross. We'll get there when we get there. What a 
stupid fucking way to end your movie. Actually, you know, I, I will argue that that is the perfect image to end the DCEU on. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. That's a good point. I was like, I think of all things in this movie, they kind of nailed that one, honestly. It's very interesting to me that you give the least charismatic somehow out of all of the Justice League members the coolest fucking theme song because when Wonder Woman shows up here mm-hmm. and then that electric fucking cello kicks in, it, it rules every fucking time. <laughs> I love that this is just what Gal Gadot's career is now. Uh-huh. She does it in Fast X, too, mm-hmm. where it's just like she shows up and smiles. She she does it in Shazam, too. Uh-huh. Also, like, I think after Wonder Woman 84, they realize, oh, this, this actress. She has no sauce. Yeah, there, there's there's no spaghetti <laughs> sauce for her for her noodles right, right. now. We Wait, were you guys not three of the four people that watched that Netflix spy movie she did? Oh, Couldn't even God. tell you what the name of it is. So absolutely not. <laughs> I can because I had to stare at that fucking billboard for six months straight. Red Notice. Oh, my God. Right. She's in Red Notice. I worked on fucking Red Notice. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> not even the one I'm talking about. Oh, no. There's another one? <laughs> yeah. Heart of Stone. Oh, Never even no. heard of that. That's the most recent one. Oh, my God. Dude, I was staring at this fucking billboard on Sunset for six months after the movie came out, like, kind of mad because there was another Netflix movie coming out that I worked on. I was like, you know, you guys could promote that <laughs> instead of, you know, this movie that no one watched six months ago. Right. Yeah. What's up with uh, Gal Gadot and dealing with stones? Because he has to deal with stones in 1984. <laughs> and over the stone. The stone. The st- <laughs> no, I don't know. Maxwell Lord. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Because mm. I know you guys are more read in terms of comic books than I am. But Thank you. The- <laughs> not, a, not a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Only read comics from the Soviet Union era. <laughs> The lasso of truth. Yes. Yeah. My understanding was if you ask questions, it's like a lie detector test almost. Eh. But in this movie, it seems to be, let me just tell you my deepest, darkest secret. Yeah. Is that how it's always worked or sort of? Yeah. Some, some writers have played with the idea that Depends it's who's writing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because this was, I didn't need the virgin joke in this movie. No, <laughs> this movie has the balls to make that tired Batman should give away all his money joke. Yeah. Like, God, I, I hate it so much. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, as much as I hate this suit, I think this is the best Affleck has sounded as Batman. Yeah. They got rid of like the voice changer and yeah. he's just straight up doing like a Kevin Conroy growl, which I love. Yeah. Dude, again, that scene like where he's talking to Barry. Yeah. It's the best Ben Affleck has ever been as Bruce Wayne. He said in interviews, he's like, this is the first time I really got what this character is supposed to be. Yeah. And I I, I I can see it. That's so unfortunate. I know. I really do like him as Bruce Wayne in Batman v Superman. I agree. When he's talking to, to Jeremy Irons and everything, I think that's a good version of him. Yeah. But um, I would love to know at least what the idea for that that Batflex script would have been. Uh, the rumor was it was like him versus uh, what's his name, Joe Mangalili. Yeah, or yeah. It was it was going to be like a mix of Arkham Asylum and and a Deathstroke movie. Yeah. yeah. That might have worked. I don't know. I think so. I think I would have been fucking in. I'm happy we got the Batman out of it. Yeah, yeah I'm glad too. we got the Batman as well. Agreed. <laughs> and so far, we're like fucking 20 minutes already into this movie and nothing's happened. But mm-hmm. so far... 39 minutes into this episode and nothing's happened. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sanchev Beskar, who is Barry's boss, is maybe the best part of the movie. Yeah. And it's a shame... We only get it for this one scene. But also, this movie is just like doing the bare minimum to suddenly give us a supporting cast for Barry Allen. It's I know, like, like we're supposed to know these characters. It's like, yeah, it's like people, well, yeah, it's like they expect like folks who don't read the comics to be like, oh my God, Patty Spivet is a character in this movie. Yeah, I had no clue. Who the, and, and it doesn't matter because these characters don't even show up until the end of the movie. Well, they, they we get their weird alternate universe. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the alternate versions. Yeah. Speaking of, you know, just characters not doing anything, Ron (laughs) Livingston. Oh, my God. Being wasted in this movie. Yeah. I just, I don't know, man. Like, Billy Crudup maybe would have brought something to this role. I don't think Ron Livingston's bad in this, but they just... This movie completely forgets most of the threads it sets up as it's going along, which yes. is, I don't think I've ever seen a movie do that. Like, yeah. this is the central point of this movie. I got to save my mom and get my dad off the hook. And it seems like we forget about that most of the time. <laughs> yeah. For Ron Livingston to have like such an all shucks manner I about know. him, about being in prison for life is <laughs> like probably the funniest thing about the movie to me. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Come on, kid. Just forget about it. Yeah. This movie's whole point is that life is a Kobayashi Maru. It's yeah. like, we've already got a movie about that. It's called Star Trek. I yeah. I need this movie. I do love Barry's line of, my dad shouldn't be in jail. My mom should be alive. It's not about what I believe. It's about the truth. Mm-hmm. There's moments here where I'm just like, you almost have something. Oh, man. If it had just cut to the Law and Order theme after that line, <laughs> it would have been great. Hit it. Yeah. Oh, my God. We have it. <laughs> He also says, though, do you remember how good the house would smell when your mom would cook? And I'm like, she used canned tomatoes, man. <laughs> I don't know. Is she supposed to be Italian or Spanish? Or what is... What is? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's all I needed. I think she's French. <laughs> she's Spanish. She's the mom from uh, Itu Mama Tambien as well. Oh, Ooh. my God. You're right. <laughs> uh-huh. Which I almost put on the schedule this season. <laughs> what a double feature. But yeah, that would have been great. Have you guys ever grieved so hard that you went into the Speed Force? <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever been so upset that the Speed Force looks different from the last movie it was in? Yeah. Yeah. Because lest we forget, they treat the Snyder Cut as canon to this movie. Oh, oh you're right. right. Oh, fuck. You're right. Yeah. Which is, I don't hate that Snyder Cut, honestly. I bitched him on about it coming out because I didn't think we needed it, but <laughs> it's better it's better than the theatrical but it it's is. still not good there yeah you go. there you go i remember texting my my buddy ryan watching the snyder cut and he's like how is it and i said well the opening scene is superman dying and his death rattle activates mother boxes <laughs> so, uh-huh. Uh-huh. i fucking hate it so far <laughs> it's not it's not bad though it makes more sense out of that garbage than the theatrical does i think the last act is really good until superman just like brutally murders somebody yeah <laughs> man <laughs> zack snyder loves of murdering superman is it necessary to be four and a half hours so no it's never it's never necessary for any superhero movie to be four hours ever also i am fully in the camp of if i'm ray fisher of course i'm fucking angry because that original justice league movie was his film yeah. like that he is like arguably the lead character yeah and uh, I'm going to keep harping on it, but with this introduction into this uh, bubble of speed forcery. The chrono bowl. Is that really what it's called? They the call, that's what they call it in the movie. Oh, yeah. my God. Why does it have a name? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Why is it piss colored? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Everything just looks like first draft AI made it. Like, <laughs> Well, and I, I keep going back to... So you're telling me nobody talked to the grocery clerk oh, no. <laughs> to see a receipt from Barry's dad? Okay, well, I got a lot. There's so much to talk about when it comes to Barry's dad stuff, but I'll I'll bring it up at the end because that's where the bulk of my questions come from. We have to read interviews from Andy Muschietti telling us that like the the reverse flash messed with the security footage. What? Like, that put it in the fucking movie. That's not in the movie. That's, that's not, not in the movie. movie. That doesn't count. Also not in the movie that he, he said in an interview, he's like, well, actually, Bruce retired Hired from being Batman because he murdered uh, someone in front of their child. Oh, boy. And I'm like, well, in the movie, he says Gotham just doesn't have crime anymore. What? I should have to read this interview about your fan fiction about your own movie. I mean, that's what this movie is. This movie is all fan fiction. Sure. Somewhere. But like, it really looks like a barely licensed video game cutscene where they show Bruce Wayne in this bubble throwing the the bat wing at him like the little batarang thing oh like, sure i'm not even upset at the vfx artist i'm upset at fucking warner brothers and this fucking hatchet job <laughs> that they did because this movie could have at least looked good if given the right resource yeah. i truly think you could have made this stuff look visually interesting right it's a flash movie it's so funny to me that this is henry cavill's last appearance as superman oh. is as like what he looks like in mortal Kombat versus dc universe <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. I don't know what looks worse, them CGIing out his mustache uh-huh. in that Batman v Superman or or whatever or Justice League, whatever it was, or this PS2 rendering that they do in this scene uh. of him shirtless. Like Ooh, I don't know. Debatable. It's debatable. Mustache gate is still the funniest thing to ever happen in movies. Yes. How badass would Superman with a mustache be? That's <laughs> fucking awesome. Let it do it. We know because Omni Man exists. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh man. Oh, that show is so fucking good. Yeah. What is with this this being like the time now that we're going to do CGI floating heads in superhero movies? Because this looks about as good as Thor Love and Thunder when they did. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> the same effect. It's crazy. And why is it that... It, again, this is just coming from someone who is not learned in fucking comics, but why is uh, in superhero movies... 
that the love interests mm. are journalists. Oh, sure. Because you got Lois Lane, you got Iris West. I'm sure there's a third. Yeah. It's a total trope from back in the day, like the the intrepid girl reporter, okay. quote unquote. I, I think it makes sense for like the kind of stories they were trying to tell back then. I was going to say, is there no other profession in Metropolis well, or Central City? Or- it, but it is weird that, yes, that has continued to be a th- like to the point where like insomniac Mary Jane Watson is Lois Lane. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> yeah you're right. I haven't even, I gotta play that new one. It oh, rips, so it's so good. Oh. It rips hard. Yeah, again, going back to last time I saw Moss, he had just come off a 20 hour bender of playing that game. <laughs> Hell yeah. I got yelled at by my wife about it. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? There's Mysteriums all over the city. <laughs> Speaking of this movie being 20 years too late, we're still doing the uh, closet full of junk that burst open sure. for perfect comedic timing. Ugh. We do it twice. We do it fucking twice in this shit. Uh, we also have like multiple pop shot jokes. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like replacement cum shot. Oh god. Like visual gags. I don't know about you guys, but if I could vibrate so hard that I could walk through walls, mm-hmm. I'd be a full on criminal. Yes. I'm sorry. It's can he do this in the comics or is this yeah, an original no, idea? Okay. Oh, he can. No, okay. he can. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it makes sense, I guess. Sure. But uh, I would be just constantly stealing things. I'm sorry. <laughs> that would be, I would be a full on villain. I mean, uh, yeah, the Flash does it here. Barry uh-huh. steals beer from next door. <laughs> Beers that he keeps in his fridge, as he says. It's not a bad joke. Ugh. I hate I hate this character. I hate it's both. a terrible performance. Mm-hmm. I could not believe watching this the first time how much I hated this character for there only to be a more annoying version of him right around the corner. Oh, totally. Yeah. I, I could not believe it. So, you know, if Barry tries back in time right here and puts the extra can of tomatoes in the cart for his mom, mm-hmm. and I'm like, you know what? If the movie ends here, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good uh, ending for Barry. I've become so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Then he uh, decides to commit sexual assault on this old lady and this old man by stealing their clothes. Right. Which is very problematic. This whole movie. That wasn't actually scripted. Ezra Miller just did that. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> they just did that. I wrote, there is no emotion. They can't even play this reunion right. Like, there's no emotion in Barry's face seeing his mom for the first time. Yeah. But that sweater rules. <laughs> I think it's all the Botox in Ezra Miller's face. Like, Do the, they have fillers? I don't. They can't emote. Yeah. Like, they can't... Like, the jawline that they've got is out of this world and like the cheekbone structure and maybe they're just genetically gifted that way but I don't remember Ezra Miller being like this sharp on everything like sure. there's not a wrinkle on this person they look like Matt Rife <laughs> a little bit <laughs> holy shit a little bit yeah and yeah man I just I know this is just supposed to be like a haha we put this here as a joke but this is kind of world breaking mm. Barry's got an Inception poster on his wall yeah so in this universe did Christopher Nolan direct that and if so did Christopher Nolan make the Dark Knight trilogy uh. Oh, you know, oh, fuck. I know it's, they didn't think that much through it, but um, no, we should we should ask. <laughs> Let me get him on the phone. <laughs> no, there, there is a cool idea here. Again, there's like some neat concepts that they just don't really do anything with. Like, I love the idea that Barry saves his mom, mm-hmm. gets to spend uh, a day with her mm-hmm. and doesn't share the memories that they had of him growing up. Yeah. Like there, there's a cool idea there where he's still trying to enjoy his time with his mom without really knowing what his time has been. In. Yeah, but yeah, we just never go anywhere with it. We com- we completely forget that Nora's alive. <laughs> yeah, I-, I think you could fix this problem mm. easily and put this movie on a different trajectory that maybe leads to something good. Kill this version of Barry. Kill the annoying <laughs> version. That way you don't have to deal with a time cop situation. You know, <laughs> Barry grabs younger Barry and just like snaps his neck. Yeah, like, shh, 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 yeah. Shh, shh, shh. yeah, she's my mom now. <laughs> I mean, it would be interesting if like, okay, look, we, two people can't occupy the same place at the same time. Right. We got to get rid of him. He's going to cause nothing but trouble, and he's annoying as ball. Mm -hmm. you know and then he gets to live out he doesn't have to worry about losing his powers and then getting his powers back for a very convoluted reason Mm -hmm. that I don't buy but that's how you fix this movie (laughs) the first time we see Barry 2 he's kicking over garbage cans and dancing in the street like an asshole and I'm just like this is this is the worst person yeah come on Nathan like you don't do that no (laughs) I kick over my own garbage can thank you (laughs) like a good person (laughs) yeah like a good person Barry also thinks about like strongly considers giving his younger self brain damage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's absolutely right. We've all been there. It's also incredibly convenient that uh, he gets kicked out on the exact day that he gets his powers. Oh my god. This is my problem with multiverse shit. It's all way too 
it's devoid of creativity and originality. Yeah. Like, what if he got knocked back a year before then, and we just have to watch this guy figure out what he's going to do for a year? Okay, Devil's Advocate, they do explain that. Yeah, yeah the bootstrap paradox kind of thing. They kind of do. That I don't mind so much as the fact that Barry somehow forgot that Zod invaded the day after he got his powers. I <laughs> yes. know. He's like, oh yeah, I got I got my powers, and then we made first contact. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this movie does rip off first contact pretty hard. I do love that it's just a generic batch of chemicals that gives him his powers. Uh-huh. Like he's like, oh, there is a rack of chemicals here, and that's what gave me my powers. And mm-hmm. then, that and lightning. I was gonna say somehow later on in the movie, just a lightning strike gives it back to him. Like uh-huh. I don't know. But uh, OG Barry here should be fucking dead because lightning burst through his fucking mouth out the back of his head. Yeah. I don't know how you live through that. <laughs> but I'm also, again, like, if the rule of this universe is that time isn't cause and effect, then he doesn't need Barry 2 to get their powers in order for him to have powers. Right. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Or you take my route, you just kill this Barry. And it, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You don't lose your powers. You don't have to go to this office and get struck by lightning again, and you're good. But then also now we have a movie about the Flash where the Flash we've followed for two films doesn't have any powers. I know. Wait, isn't that also the plot of Superman 2? Yes. Oh, man. True. <laughs> yeah. But that one does it better. And that movie had another movie before it to where you can establish that character. All True. we know of Barry is what we've gotten from Justice League. And then the Snyder Cut, I guess. Yeah, that's it. Like we and don't a cameo kn- in Suicide Squad. Yeah, we don't know this guy. So, like, him losing his powers, that happens in Spider-Man 2 as well. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just, I just This character doesn't have any weight to it because I don't i'm not grounded enough and then by the time i'm almost there there's a second version of them right like i don't know and it's insane how overstuffed this movie is because we're like a third of the way through at this point and we still have all the zod shit mm-hmm. all the supergirl shit all the batman shit like God, can we move the fuck on then i'm trying i'm trying um i didn't need to see nude ezra miller multiple times in this <laughs> kid superhero movie right and then this is where again the first of many times that the things are contradictory of like uh you can move a microwave but you can't move a baby and i'm like you 100 percent moved a bunch of babies earlier <laughs> right. and a paramedic and a nurse no fucking problem you can dodge a wrench <laughs> but you can't dodge a bullet <laughs> exactly uh, now we now we get this like sub richard lester superman 3 sequence mm-hmm. of our hero nakedly destroying property yeah i just don't need all this dick jokes and all the naked ezra miller there are so many dick jokes in this movie so like, many ezra miller says the word dick like yeah. seven times in yeah. this movie but what is jamie lannister doing there i don't i couldn't tell you <laughs> is there like a behind the scenes thing that we don't know about i think he's friends with the director mm-hmm. but i'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure i don't know and why is T- Tamara Morrison here? I know it's a Aquaman thing, but like we don't need to see him. Like he doesn't need to be I on. I truly think it's like who do we have that it will agree to do this movie? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> who's gonna come back? We know Tamara Morrison is pretty pissed off with uh, Disney right now with the book of Boba Fett. So we'll let the, he'll come over to Warner Brothers and do this cameo sure. real quick. Sure. Can we get Nicole Kidman, or is she still <laughs> is she shooting an AMC? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did think. Speaking of like halfway decent jokes in this movie, I did kind of like Marty McThigh. I thought that was. A Pretty good. <laughs> oh my god the one great joke mm-hmm. in this film like i <laughs> that i mean maybe it's just because he has big nathan energy but i don't know <laughs> I did like this whole, like, Eric Stoltz, Kevin Bacon, Michael J. Fox scene. This may be, like, the only good part of this movie, like, well-written. That's like, a good runner until we, like, make kind of a homophobic joke about Top Gun, yeah, which, is, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a joke from, like, a 2001 film. But that's why you need Quentin Tarantino there to explain it to you. <laughs> I've become so no <laughs> We also, we get this flashback to, to, to the <gasps> day that... Flash back Ooh, <laughs> hey. I think we already got that with naked Ezra Miller <laughs> <laughs> Barry tells us that he failed to save uh, this man when Metropolis was being destroyed. Boy, this shit, I laughed so fucking hard at that. <laughs> uh, me too, but like later in the movie, we see that guy and his son, mm-hmm. and then we never check back in nope. on them. So they, That guy canonically dies twice yes. in the same Well, uh, you know, this movie also ends with the Flash saying, like, I guess fuck this world. Dude, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I wrote down, like, they, he doesn't care about Supergirl. He doesn't care about this world. No. Nope. Michael Keaton's Batman. He's like, oh, well, fuck him. I guess. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> oh, man. Captain Kirk, you are not. You are not solving this Kobayashi Maru. So, <sighs> sorry. 
I, I just, I truly hate that they dragged Michael Keaton to this dog shit movie. I'm glad he got paid, but... He got paid twice. I know, I know. Three times. He he shot scenes for Aquaman 2 that are cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The plan was for him to become the new Batman of the DCEU and function as sort of like the Nick Fury of the DC Universe, like connecting all of the stories. I just, What the man. fuck is Warner Brothers doing? <laughs> Absolutely no idea. Hemorrhaging money intentionally for some reason. There's some <laughs> plot that David Zaslav has that we're just not privy to i don't know just to completely destroy the name of warner brothers maybe he's got a vendetta against the warner brothers like maybe. it's wild to me that like there's a bidding war for that wily e. coyote movie Dude. because warner brothers doesn't know what to do with looney tunes it's your fucking property it's I your know. property you dipshit <laughs> fucking put it out they're removing looney tunes I know. from I know. max Ugh. and the batman is currently streaming on netflix yeah. <laughs> what, what are we what are we doing uh, a bunch of the dc stuff is I know. on Netflix currently. It's so weird. I just, I don't know. I stand my ground. We're streaming service. <laughs> there you go. So brave. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my pedestal now. Ezra Miller, the, the annoying one, the annoying Barry, saying, wait, he's Batman? Oh, my God. I wrote down, I hate I hate this fucking movie. <laughs> I, I, I almost hate it as much as I hate seeing people with spaghetti sauce all over their dumb fucking face. But, uh, also, he's fully not playing the same Batman, no. even if we want to act like he is. Like, this is not the same performance. It's just too goofy. Mm -hmm. Like, he's, he's dealing with... He's putting up with Ezra Miller's shit, is my point. Right. Like, I wouldn't... Michael Keaton's Batman would not. He would <laughs> strap some dynamite to him and then give him a smile and push him down a wall. <laughs> like, that's what Michael Keaton's Batman would do. Now, that scene would straight beave. God, <laughs> this movie is so fucking annoying. Like, I know we're not really laying out the plot here for people that haven't seen it, what but... plot? There you go. That's the point. So, in this world, mm -hmm. when Barry went back in time, he screwed a bunch of things up. Like, Henry Cavill is not Superman, uh, Diana's not around, Michael Keaton is Batman instead of Ben Affleck, mm -hmm. and then Michael Keaton's Batman is the only info that he gets, so that's his only lead. He goes there, and he's like, oh, and I don't know why he goes there, because of, of like, oh, in my world, you're a different Batman. So? Like, what's the fucking point? I think his point is, like, I need, I need like, one hero who can help me, but then somehow he also decides, like... You're the only one who can find Superman, which he does in like 10 seconds. <laughs> World's greatest detective. I guess. But also, the point is, uh, this Flash movie is not going to stand on its own. We need something else to hang our weight on. So, mm -hmm. Michael Keaton, we need you in this movie. That's <sighs> the meta version of why this all exists. But You're right. There's one moment here where I have just a glimmer of hope uh -huh. when OG Barry starts putting Annoying Barry in his place of like, you have no idea how good you have it. Yeah. You know, you, you take mom for granted. I'm like, oh, this is finally, this is what I need. And yeah. then it's immediately undone because he goes, forget it. Right. Um, <laughs> God damn it. I wrote down this meltdown should be good, but it's just two of the same bad actor arguing. Like, yeah. <laughs> Ezra Miller just can't lead a movie. No. Like, they just can't. And, and if you're going to, they need to be a villain like we need to talk about Kevin. Like, they mm -hmm. can't be... I don't know, man. We need to talk about Barry. We need to. <laughs> we need to talk about the security in the Batcave being fucking awful. Right. Because they're down here for a long time and no alarms go off. We don't see... Um, they get there through a manhole. Yeah, that's true. What is Michael Keaton's... Uh, Alfred's name, the actor mm -hmm. that passed away? What Michael was, Goff. Michael Goff. Like, Michael Goff's not going, intruder alert, intruder <laughs> right. alert. Like, his, he does some Batman and Robin. His headroom uh, <laughs> robot voice. Yeah. And uh, I just noticed in this scene that Michael Keaton's wearing an ascot. I thought it was pretty nice. Oh, no, yeah. his ascot game on point class pure class and then man uh, <laughs> how dare they play the danny elfman score mm. in this movie i just like get the fuck out of here some of it's danny elfman and some of it is benjamin walfish doing like an interpolation yeah. of the danny like it's well, i'm sorry what was that word you just used or interpret or like a new version like he's he's changing interpolation? it interpolation that's a word interpolation is a word it's i a think word. i might be using it wrong <laughs> well you could say interpretation but or a, a reprise of you know an existing score well he does one that's like he basically combines it with his flash score yeah. and it's or his flash theme it's it's just weird i don't it's, know and it's it, weird and keaton once he's in the suit is asleep is asleep <laughs> and i you know i couldn't help it in the theater i did smile seeing him back in the suit and then everything after that just like 
felt wrong. Dude, I do love when he opens like the wall and you get like the six version yeah. other like alternate like toy versions of his suit. Yeah. I was like, oh, hell yeah. We got underwater Batman. Yeah, some of which were designed by actual comic artists. Like the Joe Quinones did like some work on this as well. And yeah. and like yeah, <laughs> there was a mo- like one of the ones in the corner I actually had the action figure of it back in the day. Yeah. Speaking of um comic related stuff mm-hmm. and I know this is when this episode comes out, we might be like a week or two out from it, but do you guys have any uh, opinion on this Dark Knight Returns cover? Oh, if he's facing the front or the back? Yeah, I, I think he's front facing. I See, I've always thought he was turning away. Mm. Wait, what? The cover of the Dark Knight Returns comic is, you know, Batman silhouetted, leaping through the air. Mm-hmm. There's uh, some discourse going on on the internet about which direction Batman is facing. It's so fucking pointless to talk about. Hang but on, I gotta pull this up. It's the comic book version of the white and blue dress. Yes, there you <laughs> no. go. I just, I think he's facing forward. Right. Blue and gold. Gold. I'm definitely blue and gold too. I'm I'm in the same camp as you, Moss. Nah, wait. <laughs> oh boy. Nah, he's fuck. Right? No, nah, he's facing. He's facing forward. You gotta look at his hands. With yeah. His thumbs. That's what I say. I think he's facing. He's I'll, facing forward. It can work either way, but who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the dress is red. <laughs> Brave. I also might be colorblind. <laughs> I heard uh, Yanni, but whatever. <laughs> and then how you guys felt seeing Keaton back in the suit for the first time is how I felt seeing the Batwing silhouetted against the moon. I'm like, uh-huh. as shitty as this movie is, that's a great fucking shot. Yeah. I'm sorry. I love it. It's great. 100%. It's the one shot of Keaton's Batman that really got me. Right before that, we get that insane moment where he's telling them and in and, and like a whisper voice, you're strapped to your parachutes. Yeah. And Ezra Miller goes, where's yours? <laughs> like, there's no communication about how loud it is there yeah also nathan you you just put posted in the chat the the superman version mm-hmm. kissing batman in that cover oh god it does what? raise the question of why there are two capes in that shot true. i don't understand it's too true oh my god i actually enjoy mm. this um batman fighting the russian soldiers i think yeah. this action actually works pretty well yeah i mostly agree my problem is the the first fight michael keaton's first batman fight scene in 30 years is intercut with Ezra Miller yep. vomiting CGI pea soup. Mm, yep, like, we yep. can't just let him have this moment. <laughs> it does feel like a statement of intent. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel the weight of Keaton's punches. He feels resourceful. Yeah. It's so good. I almost forgot this movie was called The Flash. <laughs> right. No, and, and I love the bit where he smiles to himself and he's like, this is going to hurt. Like, yeah. and he could be talking about them or him. Yeah. I, lo- I love that. Yeah. yeah. So they they find Superman, quote unquote. Uh-huh. What are the odds mm. that because I I did not follow this production at all. What are the odds that this was supposed to be Henry Cavill, and then he was like, no fucking chance of coming back for another one. No, I think it was it it was always Supergirl. Yeah. from what I know was it okay. Yeah, I think that was the plan like very early on. Yeah, yeah. I think Sasha Cow does a really good job in this movie. Yeah, love She's- her fantastic yeah i wish she was in more of it i wish i would watch a supergirl movie and they're making one but i have this sinking feeling they're not going to <laughs> they're not gonna reward her for oh, like it's it's not no nope. <sighs> yeah that's, it's not that fucking blows i think of all the suits hers looks really good yeah i think the supergirl suit looks great yeah i do too dude i've always i've liked the superman suit since man of steel yeah i think it looks cool i think it's just devoid of a little bit of color but yeah. i like the design of it i think it just needs to be a little more pop all of the Zack Snyder movies were devoid of color. Well, that's true. Yeah. And now that I'm thinking about it, I don't mind Wonder Woman's costume. No, it's great. Yeah. yeah. I wish it was brighter. Same. Maybe, but like Same. The- I also love Affleck's Batman costume and Batman v Superman. I do too. Uh, yeah. I do know, dude. It's straight out the comics. I fucking love it. He's a brick house. He's a brick shit house. <laughs> He's fucking massive in that suit. He's a brick <laughs> shit house. <laughs> Man of Steel and the Amazing Spider Man kicked off this trend of every superhero suit looking like it's. It's made out of a basketball. Yes. Yeah. It's all got that weird texture. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do. I love the Supergirl suit. It's really good. I love the way her cape connects. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So cool. And I love that she just always has her hair in her face. Like she, she's she got that like lead singer of placebo cut. <laughs> yeah. That, like fucking rocks. Which is funny because the annoying version of Barry has the same haircut. Yeah. Every you and every me. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm a placebo <laughs> fan. I'll fucking say it. I don't care. Uh, me too. Hell yeah, Nathan. You know, this movie we talked about just repeating gags mm. and just not paying off. It's just diminishing returns. But mm-hmm. they do the... How much do you weigh? Before that, when oh. they the chef spots them and then we all have to stop and wait for someone to react. Uh-huh. Like, I don't know, man. It just feels like this movie could have been way shorter if we cut out all the repeated gags we do. Because they do the same thing earlier with the mop falling over or whatever the fuck it was. True. But I do love the, the gag of Batman stepping to this guy twice. Yeah. <laughs> having no reaction. That is a good part. That is a good part. <laughs> And then Annoying Barry gets shot in the knee sure. and he goes, oh man, I needed this knee. And I'm like, is this the single most annoying character yes. of all time? Yeah, <laughs> like, 100%. This is Jar Jar Binks level of graining. <laughs> it's also wild to me, these bad guys, they have a fail safe for this orb that drops it a few feet. Yeah. Like it doesn't actually drop it into the pit. Like it's a, they have to shoot a missile inside their own base I know. for their fail safe <laughs> to work. It's just also where, where Supergirl kind of wakes up and starts fighting these Russian guys and mm-hmm. it feels I get that maybe what they're trying to go for is like, well, she's just now getting her powers back because she's out in the sun, but yeah. she moves so slow in this scene. What's well, it's in slow motion. Oh, is that what we're trying to well, I think so. No, because Keaton's Batman is active the whole time. No, yeah. It's like that episode of Dark Place. This this movie is 40 minutes <laughs> if you don't put the slow motion in. It's like Zack Snyder's Watchmen. <laughs> I actually think as much as I don't like the flash speed like how they visualize that mm-hmm. i think the fast fighting that they did in man of still is maybe the best live action like version of that that i've ever seen oh that fight with feora yeah. rules yeah it's like my favorite thing in that movie oh. i think that's your if you're gonna do a live action like anime like that's how you do fast live fighting yeah you know what i mean yeah but in this yeah i just feel like i felt like she was moving very slow i like the shots where she like zips out and you see those dudes just flying into the distance yeah and then i could Completely forgot Zod was a thing in this movie until they <laughs> until they show him on screen. I was like, oh right, that's right. We got to do a Man of Steel run back. I will find him. <laughs> I am convinced that Michael Shannon has a gun pointed at him oh, yeah. just out of frame in every scene of <laughs> this movie. What was what was the quote he had about returning to this movie? He was like, it's just little kids smashing their toys together or something like that. It's something like that. Yeah. yeah, he he knows what he's doing. I love that interview where someone asks him like, do you think Batman or Superman's gonna win? And he's like. I am utterly uninterested yeah. in that fight. <laughs> yeah. God bless Michael Shared. Love him. Happy to be here. I'm such a lucky boy. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to go home now. I also, this plan to give OG Barry his powers back mm. doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it is so, they're like, uh, well, Lightning did it before. And I'm like, well, if that's the case, anybody in this world could just pour a chemical on them and get struck by lightning. And yeah, have- yeah, 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 luckily, yeah. Bruce has the same chemicals. Uh-huh. He's dressed up like Rosie the Riveter and he's ready to party. <laughs> he, does, he is dressed up like Rosie the Riveter. <laughs> I just see some kid in, in Central City just pouring Windex on themselves sure. and stepping out in the middle of a store being like, come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a glimpse into Nathan's childhood. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why Nathan is the way he is. Uh, I do love Keaton's line of like, so your plan is to douse yourself in chemicals uh-huh. and get struck by lightning. Want, Want some, some help? help? Yeah, he knows how stupid this sounds. I love that line. Yeah. I also, I do genuinely love that scene with him stitching himself up, looking in the mirror and smiling. Like yeah. he's back. I'm back, like, baby. I, I, that is, that's his best moment in this film. Yeah. But I want to go back briefly here because mm-hmm. this is where uh, Supergirl, because she kind of goes off. She's like, I don't know if humans are worth saving. And I'm like, same girl. Uh-huh. <laughs> but she flies off and then she comes back here to actually help Barry get his powers back. But she sees Zod kill one person and she's like, oh, no, this is fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Even though like a minute ago she was like, yeah, he's going to kill billions of you and yeah. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. But I do think she brings somehow even more than Keaton, a sort of gravitas to this movie. Totally. Yeah. And I love that she is like, she's kind of the heart of the movie, which is unfortunate because you would think that the fucking Flash would be <laughs> right in a movie called The Flash. <laughs> no, 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 no. This movie's got a lot you can complain about. She is not one of them. I and I, I hope this doesn't like affect her, her career, like being in this movie because she, she's fucking great. I truly hope that like, yeah, because when, when this movie was coming out, the whole whole press tour was her yeah. like she was she was championing this film there's a really lovely video of her on skype finding out that she's gotten the role and like bursting into tears and oh, seeing her see suit that. for the first time yeah. like she 
she, this movie meant so much to her. And I, I, as much as I dislike the movie, I hope it opens doors for her for sure. Yeah. Like I said, I would watch a Supergirl movie if yeah. anyone other than Warner Brothers is making it, which is not impossible, <laughs> not a possibility. So don't tell the Snyder cut people that oh, yeah. they think Netflix can make the Snyder cut. I've seen that petition. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why can't they just sell the rights to Netflix? Boy, you don't know anything about movie rights. <laughs> how, how anything works. I also personally find it offensive that. That OG Barry gets a new flash suit here, which inevitably goes to the annoying Barry, but Ugh. it's repurposed out of one of Batman's suits. It's one of the worst looking things I've ever seen. Oh, it looks so stupid, bad. but also it feels like the statement that Andy Muschietti is essentially saying here is, I'm making this far more in- annoying character exist on the backbone of something way better that came before it. Like, mm. I am repurposing your nostalgia for my vision of things. 100%. I don't know. It also makes no sense. I'm like, do we really have time for him to spray paint this shit? Uh-huh. Like, Zod is murdering people. Do we need and to- for some reason, wrap caution tape around right. it? Oh, my God. Spots? I remember seeing, like, a t-shirt for, of Michael Keaton's Batman that came out around the time the movie came out, and it was just a shot of him smiling smiling and then at the bottom of the shirt it says the flash oh god <laughs> i was like that's this movie god. that's this movie in a fucking nutshell how did michael keaton put up with ezra miller's bullshit making this movie right i would love to have been a part of this crew just to watch this shit happen several million dollars <laughs> yeah. the only way this shit makes any sense yeah michael keaton don't work for scale Come on, you know now. what can i tell you that yeah. i actually looked it up how much uh like the leads in this movie got uh-huh. this shit is wild listen to this shit okay so <laughs> this is based on an article i saw on msn.com because was the only ones that seem to have this information. So take this with a grain of salt, but here we go. MSN? MSN, they're still around, if you can believe it. Ezra Miller, $4 million. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. $2 million for each Barry. There you go. (laughs) Michael Keaton, $2 million. Michael Shannon, $1 million. (laughs) What? Oh my god. This is bullshit. Sasha Cow, $500,000. Wait, what? That is, I think, what Gal Gadot was paid for her own solo movie. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And Ron Livingston, $100,000. That was the only ones I could find. Wow. Again, I don't know if that's true. It seems fairly accurate Mm -hmm. because uh, Hollywood hates women and paying them. Right. But, uh, um, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, as someone that deals with SAG actor payroll, yeah, yeah that's probably accurate. Sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. This movie is like uh, watching someone babysit their annoying fucking nephew for two and a half hours because <laughs> Annoying Barry, uh-huh. as I've dubbed him, is the worst. Yeah. He is the worst thing to watch in this movie. Like, if you tone the annoyingness down by even a percentage, this movie becomes at least bearable, I think. What if I just emperor this guy? Oh, my mm. God. I just, I don't know, man. <laughs> It's also like they have to overact in this suit. Yeah. It also looked weird. Like it looked like their mouth was like AI almost. Yeah. Like when they're trying to talk in this suit, it looks so goofy. I don't know. I will say I get one good laugh out of the shot where Barry 2 turns his head in the cowl uh-huh. <laughs> and it's all fucked up on his face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was pretty funny. <laughs> I think that's a good joke. <laughs> Barry 2, you're a loose cannon. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're also back, Mally, to the bullshit you pointed out in Fast X of. These walkie talkies just having conversations in the middle of chaos right. for whatever reason. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know. This battlefield scene, I don't know. It's so fucking stupid. It's so boring and bland. It's stupid. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this movie. Well, you also have gone from like in Man of Steel, it was so hard for Superman to take down a single Kryptonian at a time. Yeah. And and this movie, they're just wrecking these dudes left and right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it's OG. Uh, uh, Barry is punching them in the balls when they're going slow motion. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was kind of funny. I do love Michael Keaton fighting the big one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Michael Keaton also is, I remember saying, fuck you, I get to my TV because he's like, I got to take out the big one. He fires a missile at the ship. It clearly has a shield on it. And he's like, I'm going down, but I'm not going alone. I'm like, you yeah. know, this isn't going to work. <laughs> it's the dumbest Batman. I mean, lest we forget his first scene in Tim Burton's Batman is walking straight into a, a bunch of bullets. That's yeah. true. <laughs> but I also did find it equally as funny to watch him kill himself for no fucking reason. Uh, it was really fucking fun. Yeah. I think this is also when we get the come on Barbie, let's go party joke. Fuck which you. Yeah. Fuck you. Refers to an, a scene that was cut. Does it? <laughs> yes. That's What's what I scene? read is there was an earlier scene in the movie where, where Barry's showing Barry too how to use his powers and it's like a montage set to Barbie girl. I oh, believe that's what I read. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of my face. Sure. Okay. Bye, bye, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I didn't want to watch this movie anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna get the fuck in your face. This thing that Zod uses to kill Supergirl over and over, mm-hmm. it's just a regular blade, right? Yeah, you can just use a knife to kill a Kryptonian now. That was my question. I'm like, okay, it's not a like Kryptonite covered blade, right? It's just right. a blade. She just stopped a bunch of bullets and flew through a missile. Yeah. What are we talking about? Well, it's I think I'm assuming it's like, you know, it's Krypton metal. Okay. Not- you know, that makes sense. Then. I don't know. It just seemed weird to show her, you know, get shot by a bunch of bullets and, and they just bounce off. She flies through a missile and explodes, but then a little blade goes through her and it kills her. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So this is where Annoying Barry is like, ah, hey, we got to go back in time. We can fix this. Yep. But my question is, every time they go back in time, wouldn't there be at least two more other flashes there? Yes. yes. Okay. By the rules this movie has established. Yes. Okay. Why Why is that not? Well, I guess because we don't want four Ezra Miller's on screen at one we, time. Yeah. There's like 19 of them in this cavalcade of Kara murders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And then we really have to, I guess, do this Frankenstein's monster bullshit. With the like, Dark Flash. Oh my, is that a comic thing? There's a bunch of different evil flashes, okay. but this it, this version is, I think, exclusive to the film. Yeah. It's so stupid. So we, I guess to set this up at all, if you haven't seen the movie, when Lucky. <laughs> um, OG Barry went through the Speed Force the first time and got kicked out of it, there was this dark figure that did, mm-hmm. and it had a bunch of shit on him is all I can really describe it as. <laughs> yeah. I can't fucking breathe. I'm taking the chin off. <laughs> I mean, had it kicked him out. But uh, Annoying Barry at this battlefield gets sliced across the face, almost giving him a Joker smile. Mm-hmm. And, decides- and he doesn't heal because yeah. he recognizes that it has a scar. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. And, and he decides, I'm going to go back in time. We can fix this because Supergirl and Batman get killed here on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. And they go back in time to right here. And he's fighting one of these Kryptonians. And then like a part of him gets like embedded in his skin somehow, like this blade. Yeah. It's like, you know, with of Resident Evil 5 when Wesker becomes like just a mountain of metal and limbs and <laughs> yeah. stuff. It's like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the dude keeps getting stabbed. I'm like, he would bleed out. He would be dead. He would be fucking dead. And the implication here is if you you know, too slow to catch on is Annoying Barry is the fucking thing that kicked him out of the speed force in the beginning. Mm-hmm. It doesn't fucking matter. What's really funny to me is early in the movie, Barry's mom puts like flour in his hair as a joke. Yeah. And then Dark Flash has like a white streak of hair that yeah, looks yep. exactly the same. I'm like, what is this? I don't, well, how is that foreshadowing? I don't know, man. Fuck you. Know, you. <laughs> I think I think maybe the best version in a superhero movie of a character playing an older version of themselves mm-hmm. is Chris Evans in Endgame. Yeah. Uh, when he comes back and he, he basically just looks like Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think Ezra Miller playing old version of Annoying Barry, like, it's so bad. It's really fucking bad. The makeup looks bad. Mm-hmm. The old age voice is bad. But what if when <sighs> older evil Barry went for the killing blow, he said, let's go party. <laughs> oh my God. Would that be better or worse? That's worse. Older Barry has fangs. Yes. Yeah. And purple eyes yeah. for some reason. Well, time travel, guys. Now oh they God. stand around and watch a clip show of other worlds. Oh Dude, okay. To set this up. So Annoying Barry keeps going going back in time because no matter what they do Batman and, and Supergirl just keep getting killed over and over mm-hmm. and also the movie drops that shit right here yep. we do not go back we have no idea what happens there nope. I guess that version of Earth is doomed forever it's so wild that the last hour and a half of the film suddenly does not matter <laughs> no it doesn't matter at all Yep. so they go back in time so much that OG Barry is like look you keep going back in time you're starting to affect other worlds they're starting to collide in doesn't make any sense sure but this is gotta be the most offensive thing I think I've ever seen in a movie. So upsetting. And I've seen some real offensive movies. This movie (laughs) uses AI to recreate George Reeves. Dude. And this film was released on the Oh my god. This man killed himself because he was typecast as Superman. I just and in the midst of a fucking strike where a big factor was fucking AI. Yes. There's so much to talk about with this because not only is this shit a non-fucking sequitur, like it has no impact on fucking anything, uh-huh. it's also just shameless yeah. and fucking gross because the movie stops dead to do this shit. Yeah. Like they just stand around looking at it. <laughs> and you've got, you know, Christopher Reeves Superman looks like shit. You've got Helen Slater Supergirl looks like shit. You've got Adam West Batman that looks like shit and doesn't even have the ears on the cowl. Right. He just has a round fucking head. It's man. <laughs> and then maybe the worst is the Nicolas Cage. Uh. 
uh, ill fated uh, Superman. So yeah. okay, so for people for general audiences mm-hmm. who don't know about Kevin Smith's Superman Lives script, what does this scene I would mean? love to know? Like, what is this scene to people? I would even be surprised if you recognize this was fucking Nicolas Cage. Sure. It just looks like a pile of shit. <laughs> and to know that Nick Cage filmed this cameo in person and they just glossed it over. They just put an AI sheen over it. He said none of that is what I filmed. Yeah. I filmed a completely different scene. Yeah. I was there for five hours yeah. and then they just did whatever they wanted. And then like the implication here is, oh, these are all colliding in on himself. And I'm uh-huh. like, I don't even know what that means. Like, what is Christopher Reeve's Superman colliding into Nick Cage's Superman world? What does that even mean? Did this movie casually murder Christopher Reeve's yes. Superman? Yeah. Like is my question because it doesn't answer us. Well, if the whole world's are colliding, we're killing an impossibly large number to calculate. Right. I don't know. I had to look this up, but <laughs> the flash came out on the anniversary of George Reeves' suicide. Oh my gosh. Like legitimately to the day it came out on the anniversary. I just I don't know what we're doing here, man. Like and it again, none of this matters because the movie drops it like it's a fucking sack of shit. It doesn't matter. It drops it like a can of tomatoes. Like a can of tomatoes. <laughs> also with Christopher Reeves Superman, canonically Brandon Ruth took over that role. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like you could have had an actual living person yeah. and not like completely just used a dead man's corpse. We could have gone Superman Returns there. We could have kept the tenor of the rest of the movie and just given Kevin Spacey a cameo. There you go. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yeah, fuck it. Who wouldn't see a movie starring Ezra Miller and, and Kevin, Kevin Spacey, Spacey. in <laughs> Directed by Brett Ratner. Oh, God. We, we don't see... Produced by the Weinsteins. We don't see <laughs> Cyborg World. Yeah. We don't see nothing. I don't know, man. This is fucking awful, and I I hope David Zaslav goes down very soon. The <laughs> rumor has it that they did ask Christian Bale to be in this as well, and he said no. Yeah, uh, good. No. He's smart as shit. I'm honestly blown away that they didn't still try to get away with like a CGI version of Christian Bale. Yeah. Could you imagine if there was like a Heath Ledger Joker laugh in this? Like, I, I could w- you imagine, dude? I was truly waiting for it the entire movie. Yeah. I thought we were gonna get Jack Nichols sin or something like what are you thinking madonna as harley quinn (laughs) what are you thinking doing this shit yeah and it for it to have no impact on the script (laughs) and again uh, not only that but like none of these are flash characters you couldn't throw mirror master in there you couldn't have the trickster or like you couldn't have grant gustin show up yeah the guy who held the line for barry allen for nine years it's so devoid of originality and creativity like if you're gonna do this Nick Cage as Superman makes the most sense mm-hmm. because we haven't seen it's not a nostalgia drip feed. Like sure. we haven't seen that before. What would that that would be a nice way to like, you know what, dude? You went through a lot. We know you really wanted to be Superman. This will be your chance. Yeah. It's like when he voiced Superman in the Teen Titans movie. Like, right. Give him something to do. And like, that would have been nice. Give me David Goyer's Green Arrow. You, you know, go. if you're going to go this route. Yeah, <laughs> just do something we haven't seen before instead of just being like, hey, you remember? You like this shit? Eat the slop, you fucking pigs. This is It's Member Berries, the movie. It is. It's- we could have had Darren Aronofsky's Batman. Would have liked to have seen that? <laughs> oh, let's go. Would have been interesting to see. Just drive Driving around in a Lincoln Town car. Yeah. I just, I don't know, man. I, I was, I even on the rewatch. I know it's common. I was still seething. Oh yeah. And I'm not even a huge comic book guy, but I was like, this is so fucking distasteful. I just, I don't know. I'm glad this movie fucking bombed, and I'm glad <laughs> I'll never see a Flash two. Uh, anyway. The implication here is just that Keaton's Batman's just dead. Supergirl's dead. That whole world, Earth is fucking destroyed from Zod. Yeah. Like, and they mentioned they killed uh, Henry Cavill as a baby. Right. So there you go. That's what this movie, that's how this movie leans on and then just forgets that all that shit happened. Well, and also it's like one of the most upsetting parts is like, okay, great. Show me that scene. Yes. yes. I want to see the devastation if we're going to do that. If he's not going to save them at all, at least show it to me. I want to see Michael Shannon stomp on a baby. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to see Michael Shannon curb stomp a baby. <laughs> well, here's the other thing is they did shoot a scene with Michael Keaton and Sasha Kelly showing up at the courthouse at the end of this movie. Oh yeah, that was the original ending because that was the first photos of her as Supergirl. Right. Get the fuck out of here. And then they reshot it with Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot showing up and then they reshot it with George fucking Clooney. Yeah. We'll get there guys, we'll get there. Fuck, we're not there yet? I want to be done. Uh, we're, we're almost done. <laughs> we're almost there. So he, he goes 
goes back in time again. He and Nathan have other shit to do besides talk about this fucking movie. <laughs> this was your suggestion, so you fucking made this bed. We're lying in it. I did not think I'd have to be here. So OG Barry is the only one to get out of this alive because yeah. he, you know, annoying Barry steps in because old Barry's gonna kill him, and then they just kind of just die off. It doesn't fucking matter, right? But OG Barry goes back to the supermarket and takes the can of tomatoes he put in there back out. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh well, I just I guess my mom's gonna have to fucking die. I do think this scene is pretty good. I think it could have been. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know that Ed Ezra Miller is necessarily very good in this, but I do think Maribel Verdu is, like, really lovely in this scene. Yeah. yeah. It's a good performance. She didn't know what movie she was in. She's trying. Right. She's trying. But if some creep came up to me in a grocery store and clearly <laughs> stolen sunglasses and a beanie and was just trying to talk to me about how much he loves his mom, I'd be like, security! I'm supposed <laughs> to meet my mom. Security, please! <laughs> You remind me of her so much. So I got a question. Um, what the fuck happened to his mom? Right. Yes. So Barry is upstairs. Ron Livingston has to run out to get an extra can of tomatoes for her, her recipe. Mm-hmm. He comes home. She's stabbed in the fucking gut. Mm-hmm. And Ron Livingston goes to jail for it. Yeah. What happened? In the comics, the reverse flash murdered his mom yeah. to like basically get a revenge on Barry and then inadvertently ends up you know, putting in motion him eventually becoming a superhero. So is the movie trying to set up a second movie of like, that's a mystery. I we'll guess. To, oh my God. Oh my God. Well, I'm sure the director said something about it in a fucking interview. He did. He said something <laughs> like, well, yeah, Christ. the reverse flash was never in the screenplay. Oh, so it's just God. like, I guess we'll not answer the murder. Guys, if you're making a movie, make this fucking movie. Tell a story. Yes. Mm-hmm. Cause I thought as someone who doesn't know the comics that well, I thought she just, you know, had an unfortunate knife fact accident like that teacher in Final Destination. <laughs> what am I supposed to garn from this? Like, as a casual viewer, I'm supposed to be like, did she just trip and fall? What right. the fuck? My mom, when we left the theater, because she also, unfortunately, had to see it, Yeah, she was like, so did Barry's dad actually, was he guilty? But they, like, and he just couldn't accept it? Like, they show you that he's not, because right. they show him outside when she's screaming. What, so you like, never stabbed somebody and then realized you forgot something in the car? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a memento, so there you go. <laughs> A moment. <laughs> this movie cannot just do one version of a joke. They have to do it twice because now we get another joke of Barry stealing food from somebody. Yeah. And it's, of course, Andy Muschietti. This is his cameo with the hot dog. Andy Muschietti with a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> if I was on trial for supposedly murdering my wife and I know I didn't do it and my son was late yeah. to the trial, I'd be so fucking pissed. Well, I mean, to be <laughs> fair, he just told him on the phone the other day, uh, don't even bother. That's Who cares? True. <laughs> hey, kiddo, I'm staying in jail. We got Wi-Fi now. <laughs> <laughs> of all the bullshit in this movie, this courtroom scene is a huge, steaming Jurassic Park pile of fucking shit. Uh-huh. The camera... They show, they're like, oh, the whole reason you're on trial is because you went to the store. We know you. There, someone went to the store, but we can never say it's you for sure because you never show your face. Right. So, a couple of questions here. Number one, does this grocery store only have one fucking camera? Right. Mm-hmm. Number two, does Ron Livingston just walk in and just stare at the floor the whole fucking time he, he's in this grocery store? Right. I mean, that's how I grocery shop. And then number <laughs> three, the lawyer says, oh, thanks to the latest tech from Wayne Enterprises, mm-hmm. we've now, quote unquote, enhanced the footage. Yeah. What the fuck does that mean? Right. Did they just deep fake him yeah. to show his dad looking up? Because they say he never looks up and then they show him looking, looking up. up. So what does this mean? <laughs> so the implication is that the Flash then decided, you know what? I'm going to put the cans up higher. Show me that. Right. Fucking show me that in the movie. <laughs> no, I know. I know. It's literally the resolution of the film and they can't be fucking bothered to put it in the movie. So also, that's a butterfly effect, isn't it? Because he talked about the butterfly effect with uh, Batman. Batman earlier in the movie. Yeah, but it's different now. Oh, okay. It's been a whole 10 minutes. <laughs> and also, his takeaway from the whole movie was like, I'm going to do the same thing over again, Yeah, uh-huh. but this time, I'm not going to save my mom. Yeah. Right. I'm just going to save my dad. And that won't change anything. Yeah, I'll choose which parent to save. Right. That's so fucking stupid. He's like, okay, I'll take the can of tomatoes out of my mom's cart, but I'll move all of the tomatoes to the top shelf. Mm-hmm. And also, as the person working there, you know, stocking the shelves, they gotta be like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what? These are too fucking high. Ugh. And that's the origin story for the next supervillain. <laughs> for Stock Boy. Condiment King. <laughs> coming in hot. I'd be into that. I'd be into it. That's a real supervillain, by the way. It for is. Those who don't know. Yeah. So we're getting here to the end. About fucking time. What does Iris even see in Barry? You know, I can I can fix him. 
<laughs> all he does from her point of view is flake on her yeah. or act fucking insane. Yeah. I don't know. Women love a bad boy, DC. I guess. That jawline. And a jawline, I guess. Do you think she remembers him saving her in slow motion and then eating a hot dog? That, that Well, she makes reference to it early in the movie, doesn't she? She goes, yeah, oh, didn't I right. see you a few years back? And he goes, no. No, that was a guy in a Flash costume. So <laughs> fucking stupid. I hate this movie. No, no, he didn't have a Flash costume. Oh, he, you're right. He had no shoes. Right. So dumb. I mean, using logic, that means he was dead. <laughs> So, Ron Livingston gets off scot-free. Right. And then uh, George Clooney shows up mm. as a Batman. And that's really all that happens. And then Ezra's tooth falls out. Yeah, because we forgot to mention his tooth fell out earlier. He's super glued it back in. Huzzah. We're at the end. Oof. But the thing is, I think this movie would have worked so better as ending if it would have ended on a, actually a pretty good joke, which is him going, okay, who the fuck is this? Uh-huh. Cut to black. Yeah. I think that would have been a great way to go out on this movie. That is apparently what was shown to test audiences shortly before the film open they did not have the Clooney cameo well I would have liked the Clooney cameo and then him going who the fuck is this cut to black right. I think that would have worked better but the tooth falling out just I don't know it's fucking dumb again I think it's exactly the right note to just like rest in piss DC <laughs> <laughs> absolutely RIP oatmeal but also rest in piss to DC yeah <laughs> there you go and then we get this post credit scene with Jason Momoa. Oh, right. I forgot about that. I love Jason Momoa, and I do I do like this little bit. Uh-huh. He's so down for the dumbest shit. I love it. But I also think this is the most useless post credit scene ever filmed. Yep. 100%. I, I don't know what they're doing with this, but also... So what happened with that volcano uh, erupting? Did <laughs> Superman deal with that? Is everyone okay? <laughs> yeah, he lasered it into submission. <laughs> he lasered the volcano into submission. All right. Well, I know that the episode doesn't feel like the Flash is involved because it's super long, but uh, any final words before we get to the wrap-up shit here? Nope. I'm so tired. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I we're, have to pee so bad. Well, well, we're almost there. Let's get into Prop Cop. For new listeners, Prop Cop is where we look at all the props in the movie The Flash, and we try and take one each for ourselves. Mally, this is your pick for the week. Why don't you tell me what prop, if any, you want from The Flash? Michael Keaton's ascot collection. There you go. <laughs> I've got that written down, too. Hell yeah. <laughs> Moss, you're our guest. What prop would you like? Pass Barry's headphones. Okay. Oh, yeah. Those headphones look like they were going to stab him in the ear. Like, I don't know why they were so sharp. Yeah, but they look cool. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, Nathan? In Wayne Manor, Bruce has a painting of cherubs peeling slices off of like a thing of bologna. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. All right. That look good above the bed. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you peel off some bologna? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Ugh. OG Barry in his fridge, uh, he's got a can that just says, uh, eight hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't know what that is, and I would absolutely not eat it, but <laughs> what a prop to have. <laughs> why Why is that there? Why is that so funny? <laughs> why is his milk on its fucking side? I don't know. He's, you know why he's friends with the abusive husband and malignant that keeps his Mountain Dew on the side? <sighs> what is going Shit. on in this photo? Why does he have coconut milk and dairy milk? And a giant tub of butter. I don't know. That's so good. I did have an alternate. There's sure. a neon sign across the street from his apartment building mm -hmm. that says Wiz Comics, Ooh. and I, I love that too. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, well, how about bit part, fellas? There's a lot of extras in this movie. Uh, we got to build our filmography. We can fantasy cast ourselves in some of these minor roles. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and go first. Yeah. I want to be the Russian chef who doesn't get affected by Batman bucking up at him. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah. That's good. Nathan, what about you? During the opening fight scene, there is a, uh, one of the bad guys just lets himself out of the car when <laughs> that flick <Yeah. laughs> drops in. He just I rolls just, out the car. Yeah. I love, he's like, this is going to hurt less than yeah. whatever Batman's <laughs> going to do to me. Uh -huh. I love that. Mally? No, I don't want to be in this piece of shit. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. I, I do not follow you, but you know what? WB will just make an AI version of you and put you in anyway. Mm -hmm. so Fuck. You don't really get to say so. Moss, what about you? I want to be the dad or the son who Barry didn't save Dude, so I oh can my die God, yes. in peace. What's so funny about that shit is when Zod <laughs> activates the world engine and you like from a wide shot, you see all the debris floating up in the sky. You can see the guy too. Mm -hmm. And it's so fucking fun to know he's just going to get hammered down into the <laughs> earth. In any <laughs> other movie, oh. th that would be like an emotional through line mm -hmm. that would end with him saving both of them but no well it's it's like the theatrical cut of justice league with that weird family in russia or whatever uh -huh. that has no bearing on anything mm. yeah. no burying on yeah, anything yeah. stop that's fair enough <laughs> with that let's get into the silver lining for the flash mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to take off the table that the silver lining could be that the DCEU is dead. Fuck. Fuck. I know I know you guys so well at this point. I'm taking it off the table. Fuck you. We got to talk about this movie. Fuck. <laughs> I was going to start to give you guys some time. Uh-huh. Ron Livingston got off, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> Hell yeah. So there you go. Hell yeah. Moss, do you have a silver lining? It's okay if you don't. I do. Okay. I learned that the greatest threat to the multiverse <laughs> is not just one Ezra Miller. <laughs> it's three. <laughs> That's knowledge. Knowledge is power. Yeah. That's good. Mally, what you got? Got to see a baby in a microwave. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. Nathan. Yeah. Have you pulled anything together? Yeah, I had, a, I had an alternate. Okay. Even though it didn't work out for him, the Keaton Batman got one last ride. There you go. That's fair enough. I actually do love that as as much as I hate his death scene, I love I love the moments where you can tell that he's like happy to be back in the game. Yeah. yeah. There's brief glimpses of it. The yeah. briefest. <laughs> All right, fellas. Well, The Flash is a fucking god-awful movie. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking long. If I'm going to double feature this movie with something else, I need something to put me in a better mood. Mm -hmm. So we always like to do this on the show with every movie we cover. We give you an alternative. Moss, you don't have to have one, but think about one for the time being while we go. Uh, Mally, what's a movie people should watch after they watch The Flash? Listen, this movie is trash and never should have been made. Mm -hmm. So I'm picking a film that is just two absolute heroes trying to stop another other terrible superhero movie from getting made mm. and that is jay and silent bob strike back <laughs> oh yeah you also get some uh, some ben affleck in that too yes. so there's a connective tissue there as well yeah hey he was the bomb and phantoms yo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nathan what are you gonna watch there's another movie that i prefer about people who are very bad at being superheroes <laughs> 1999's mystery men there you Hell go yeah. there you go if you have to watch another superhero movie, I think Man of Steel is a good counterpoint. I actually do like Man of Steel. I know a lot of people don't. Mm. But as someone who doesn't have a huge affection for Superman, I think it's a good movie. I fucking love Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. But I truly, truly, with all my heart, think you should watch literally anything else <laughs> other than a superhero movie after this. What about Brightburn? <laughs> oh, my God. Don't watch any movie that we've covered on the show before, including Brightburn. Oh, right. Yeah. Right, right. Watch every movie we've covered on the show before. <laughs> Moss, what do you got? I think I've got two. Okay. Overachiever. <laughs> I would recommend watching the first Superman. Yeah. 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 And then I would recommend watching Back to the Future. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because you get to see Michael J. Fox and not Eric Stoltz in that. Yeah. And just, <laughs> you know, like see time travel done well. There yeah. you go. Guys, I, I think this may be the one of the worst movies we've ever covered on the show. Yeah, you're welcome, boys. <laughs> I've been on three of the worst <laughs> films. Yeah, keeping that streak going. The three worst movies we've done during my tenure on the show, I think, are this one, Jurassic World, and 365 Days. Yeah, you might be right. 365 still the reigning champ of garbage. I but don't think you're ever going to knock it off its crown. Like, knock the crown off its head. We got to do the sequel. <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to watch it. I might. I might do it. I'm going ahead and bracing myself for the impact when I ask this question, but I have to ask, do we recommend The Flash? Fuck off. Yeah, rules. <laughs> Moss? Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely the fuck not. I do think, like, this is not the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's I would say it's one of the m- movies I hate the most. There you that go. That, that, that's a better version of saying that, yeah. I truly think this is a detestable film. Yeah, it's it's abhorrent. It is so concerned with fire hosing you with fucking nostalgia mm-hmm. and multiverse bullshit that it is somehow even worse on the rewatch. Yes. I never want to see Ezra Miller on screen again. I don't think you're in danger of that. Probably not. Um, I think Andy Muschietti has immediately ruined any goodwill he built up with Ma Mine It. And I have zero interest in what he does next. It will be the brave and the bold. <sighs> There's no way he gets to make that, right? Like, even though I know he's attached, but I just, I can't, um, I can't imagine. Well, he's also doing the It prequel series for hbo why i don't know and he's doing the live action attack on titan movie unnecessary stop it yeah i don't know man two stories that don't need to be told live action (laughs) animes are ridiculous why i don't know why what warner brothers is doing i have no idea all right well sorry to leave you on a bummer everybody but uh please (laughs) subscribe rate leave some feedback we do have more uh uplifting episodes on our show if you can believe it where we have more fun if you want you can follow us on twitter instagram tiktok or over on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the silver linings playlist if you want to get in touch with us you can email us at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com 
<sighs> Moss, sorry. <laughs> we'll get you on a good one at some point. I promise. No, we won't. You said that last time. I know. I know. You've also been promising Brandy and Jen I that know, for a while. <laughs> I know. But it's just, it's. I like hearing Moss angry. Sure. Like it, it doesn't happen often because he is such a soft-spoken man that when he's upset, it's, <laughs> it's worthwhile. Mm. But thank you for coming on. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So next week. <laughs> yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> next week is my pick. And uh, I got a clue for what we're talking about, which is another equally very long movie. And my clue for next week is uh, this new generation may not prefer Bush, but uh, I don't mind it. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) My favorite line delivery in that movie. (laughs) Truly. All right, fellas. Well, any final thoughts before we get out of here? I have to pee so bad. I hated this. (sighs) I hated it too. Thank you, Mally. Why do you guys let me pick? I don't know. Anyway. Without further ado, rest in peace, Oatmeal, rest in piss, Warner Brothers, <laughs> and uh, as always, I know sex exists, I just <laughs> never experienced it. The pain of this movie made me who I am. I've become so numb, I can feel you there, Excelsior! 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 Oh, look at us! up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!